Hello and welcome to another Catapult Training. This is John C. Bland II and today we're going to look at terraforming our Fargate intro. So our Fargate intro was all about click ops. We went through the process of actually setting up a Fargate deployment of WordPress and a simple color Docker container and it worked. Everything was rosy, right? I hope so. But now we want to look at actually terraforming this. So it's important that we do this because one, it's simple once we're able to get it up and running, it's simple to tear it down and we can also start as many of we, as we want pretty quickly and easily. So let's take a look. As usual, I have a very simple make file here. Just makes it easy for me to type commands. And I also have make shortened as M. So anytime I run M, it's basically make. All right, so to start off, we have simple variables file and the variables file is just for a VPC ID, just because we're not going to create a VPC ID in this. Um, what we're going to do is basically look up a VPC. So instead of typing out the entire VPC details and all of that, let's just go ahead and add it in. All right. So essentially, we're going to look up a VPC. We're going to get the subnet IDs off of that VPC because we need those to tell our service where to actually place these tasks. And then we're also getting the security group called WordPress that we created from our click ops. Normally we would create all of this as part of our infrastructure, but we're not in this one because we're focusing on the Fargate side of things. All right, so next, let's take care of some of our main objectives here. So I know we're going to need a couple locals here, and we're going to need some sort of application name. In this case, let's say TF Fargate intro works for me and because we're going to need this a few times let's just go ahead and put this in a variable keep in mind our goal is always to dry up our code right we want to keep our blast radius small please refer to our other video of drying up terraform it is definitely one that will help in terms of utilizing locals and modules effectively all right so if you recall the first thing we needed was actually an aws ecs cluster now, I use this. Some people use default. Some people name it, whatever they want to name it. I'm just saying this because I'm a programmer. <laughs> so name, let's just call it the local application name. And that's it. Our cluster is good to go. So let's go ahead and take a look at this plan. Uh, let's do a little config here. Let's add in a provider. All right, so we shouldn't have to put in our region every single time we actually want to run this. So let's rerun it. All right, so you can see here, it's going to create our cluster for us. Great, it's a great start. All right, so the next thing we needed to create was actually an ECS service. Now, this service, if you recall, needed a couple things. So let's just go ahead and put in as much as we can right now, and then we need to come back and actually take care of our task definition. So we're going to have our name. It's going to be the same thing as our application name. Uh, you know what? Let's call the service WordPress, since that's what we're actually deploying. The cluster is going to be our cluster. We actually need to set a few parameters from if you recall when we were actually setting up our service. We need to tell it how many instances of the task we want and we need to say how much is the minimum and maximum percent uh, that are healthy. And so those are available. So we're at max gonna have 200% available and our minimum is zero. Now, I'm making it zero because we want to be able to destroy the task and keep everything else around. And that just basically means we can easily just kill off a task, don't worry about the auto scale aspect, and we can basically add the task back whenever we want. And our launch type is local dot launch type actually i'm going to group this up here with the others 
All right, and so this is where our task definition comes in. So our task definition is going to consist of some things that we haven't created yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that in there for now just as a placeholder. So we also need a network configuration. The network configuration allows us to set the subnets, the security groups, and whether or not we want a public IP address. Normally we would run this within an AOB and we would actually set our public IP to zero. But since we're just testing here, we're going to set the public IP to true. That's going to allow us to actually access the task directly. All right, so remember we had the security group called this. So we're going to take that as our security group. And our subnet IDs. Great. All right, so we need to actually take care of this task definition. All right, so for our task definition, it is of type AWS ECS task definition. So this is going to have container definitions. Now, I'm going to leave this as a placeholder right now because we're going to fill that in with something else. But essentially, the container definitions is going to be a list of different containers that we want to run. We could run multiple containers within this one, or we could just have one. It's completely up to your needs for this specific task. The family, let's just call it local application name. So whatever our application name is, that's going to be the name of our family as well. And we also need to tell it uh, what capabilities it requires. In this case, we want to say it's our local.launch type, which is Fargate. Remember, we also set some compute. So the compute CPU, we had 256. Memory was set to 512. And our network mode was set to AWS VPC. This specific module here from CloudBees is one of my favorites for Fargate development. I like it because it provides you an easy, clean interface. So you can actually utilize some type checking and things of that sort for your different properties and it returns to you the JSON or a JSON map. So this is exactly what we need in order to configure our container. CloudBees has over 150 Terraform projects publicly available in GitHub for free that they also provide support in their SweetOps Slack channel. It's kind of amazing that they are able to do this much work, but this is definitely one of my favorites. So let's put this one to use real quick. Let's instantiate a new module. And let's plop in the source. We're going to use release version 23. Always use some versioning here. If you use master, I guarantee you'll regret it later in life. Use versioning. There are good tools that are out there like Dependabot, even though it doesn't support version 012 just yet. Um, but there are tools out there that can help you keep track of your versions and make it easy for you to know when your modules are outdated. So in this case, we're going to create a container name. Let's just call it WP. And the container image, if you recall, we were using WordPress PHP 7.2. So now let's use this. Module.wordpress.com. Jason. Actually, let's rename this WordPress definition, just to be clear. Okay, let's check our plan. Oh, let's fix this real quick. All right. Okay, we have a couple errors here. Let's take care of these in real time here. So let's take a look at our main TF, line 22. And I had a misspelling there. So it's actually security groups. So now we can come back and actually fill this in. For now, what we're going to do is take the current instance that we have. We're going to take the family name off of it. And then we're going to use the same instance, and we're going to get the revision. All right, our plan actually tells us that the VPC doesn't exist, and that's actually true because I'm so used to working in West 2, I'm actually meaning to be out of East 1. 
So let's run this plan again. All right, great. Let's take a look real quick. We have our cluster suite. We have a service with our expected settings. Pulled in our subnets and our security group. Here's our task definition with our CPU set. It's also set to essential. The image is set. I have our memory, our memory reservation, and the name of it is WP. Now we have default port mappings here for port 80. That's cool. If we had other Docker images that we needed, we can actually control and customize those port mappings. And we have a couple defaults here. We're good to go. So let's take a look. And while that's running here in AWS, we can see we have only these two from our previous demo. And we'll say yes. And off the party goes. All right, so it created the task definition. Let's refresh this. There we go, Tia Fargate intro. Here's our task definition. Has everything that we expected in here. Sweet. Here's the Tia Fargate intro. It says we have one service and one pending task. So it looks like our apply worked. Here's our WordPress service. Take a look at our task. Here's our WordPress version. It's pending, starting up. We have our public IP address. And the minute this is ready, we should see our WordPress intro screen. Sweet, we're running. Let's see if this actually worked. Boom, awesome. So now our service is up is running. We can easily make changes to our application. We can change versions if we want. If they came out with version PHP 11.8, we can just change our container image and our application would deploy and update really quickly and easily. So this is the reason why we want to start terraforming things. Because once we have this in place, the majority of this doesn't really change too much. But the great thing about this is actually being able to repeat this consistently across any account. So in this case, we are specifically targeting one VPC. But if we were generating a new VPC, new subnet IDs and security groups, the only thing we would need to change if we wanted to deploy this into East 2 is the region we were targeting. So terraforming, it's a lifesaver. I love it because of these simple reasons. Now, we're going to follow up with this video. We're going to follow up and show how we can actually dry this up some. We can build reusable modules. And we're also going to look at utilizing an ALB so we can get away from utilizing these IP addresses. But what we need to do now is actually destroy all of this infrastructure. So this is the other beautiful part about Terraform is that I created everything. And then very quickly, I'm able to get rid of it all and my billing is done. Fargate charges by the minute, so technically, I just got billed a minute for that quick little deployment. That's it. If we take a look, our task is no longer serving. That's the beauty of Terraform. This has been another Catapult training. Happy coding. Mm -hmm.